Lieutenant. Today I'm going to talk to you about your belly and your pelvis, which are two of my favorite topics of conversation when it comes to Pilates. This is probably one of the most important videos that I'll post. It's critical to get the stomach working properly and the pelvis in the proper position in order to perform Pilates both safely for your body and effectively. This is um, some information that I go over in my first class with any new student, regardless of whether they've never seen or done Pilates before, or if I have somebody who comes to me who's been taking a weekly mat class for five years. We still go through this information, and usually the student learns something new, or there's some tweaking and fine-tuning we can do to the position or the way they've been working their muscles. Okay, so we're going to lay down on the mat or on your floor. We're going to start with the feet about hip width apart, your hands supporting you behind your legs, and shoulders relaxed. You're going to draw the tummy in, and you're going to round back, so we're C-curving the spine. The chin is gently tucked in towards the chest. You're going to come down one vertebra at a time, and then I want you to get comfortable on your mat. And I'm going to try to scoop to make sure I'm in the shot of the camera. So first we're going to talk about how you work your stomach in Pilates. In traditional um, crunches and a lot of um, old school abdominal work, it was performed with the back flat and you would be lifting your head and crunching and we'd be working primarily from the top layer of muscles called your rectus abdominis. So your rectus abdominis connects from your breastbone down to your pubic bone. It goes straight up and down. It's the more superficial level of stomach muscles. Um, we will work from this area with Pilates, but if you only work that area, it will act like a hammock. It'll tend to swing out away from your body, and it can give you a gut and draw you into a sway back position. It's stressful for your back. It certainly doesn't support your back. It does the opposite. It strains your back, and it will give you a gut, and most of us would like to have a flat stomach. In Pilates, every exercise is going to begin from your deepest belly muscle called your transverse abdominis, and it runs around you like a belt. It actually attaches into your back tissue and muscles, and when you learn to contract it, it supports your back as if you were wearing a soft brace or a corset. It really does, but it'll be your body doing it instead of a brace. So in order to locate that transverse abdominis muscle, you're going to take two fingers, your first two fingers, and you're going to bring them to either side of your belly button and a couple inches below your navel. So with a cough or a giggle, if you produce a fake cough, <coughs> you'll feel something pop into your fingers if you're in the right spot. If you're not feeling that pop into your fingers, reposition and try again. So a cough or a giggle will make that pop. And it's common, especially in the beginning of a Pilates practice, that one side might be more prominent than the other. And that can be an indicator that you've got one side of your belly that's stronger than the other. And that's okay. And Pilates will work to balance that out. Okay, once you've located that transverse abdominus muscle, you're going to gently sink your belly button down and in towards your spine. And you should feel a little bit of a hardening underneath your fingertips. It's never going to be as strong as when you cough. No matter how much Pilates we do, it's not going to be that dramatic. It's going to be a subtle hardening, and the, the weaker that you are through those muscles, it can be a little more difficult to detect that contraction. So play with that for a moment and see if you can find it. Uh, when you start learning to contract this muscle, depending on your background and level of body awareness, some people will, and I'm going to move my arms so you can see, will flatten the back and they'll squeeze the glutes trying to get that contraction. Well, you might get the belly contraction, but you're also getting a lot of glutes in that side and back muscles, and we don't want that. We want you to pull in the belly just at the belly. So you're isolating through that transverse abdominis. It's a very subtle movement and motion. It may not feel like you're doing a lot of work at first, particularly if you're used to doing really hardcore workouts or high resistance training. This may not feel like you're doing enough, but you are. That's exactly what you're supposed to be doing. You can imagine that you've got weights or some heavy books sitting right here on the pelvis, and the belly button just gently draws down and in. It's helpful for some people to imagine a string from your navel 
coming out your back down towards the floor and you would gently tug that string and pull the belly button like you're trying to button it into your backbone. So different visualizations and techniques work for different people. Some may sound insane to you and not make any sense at all and something might click and it might give you that perfect cue for getting that transverse abdominus to contract. Good, okay. Next, we're gonna talk about the position of the pelvis. Pilates exercises are traditionally done in a neutral pelvic alignment. This is the alignment that we're born with. When you watch small children bend down to pick up a toy off the floor, they squat beautifully. They have that gorgeous curve through their lumbar spine, their pelvis is perfect, they reach down and they pick up their toy. You don't see many adults doing that. So a lot of us lose that and we actually don't even know where it is. A lot of us, we, we can't feel it anymore. So we're gonna work on that today. Your neutral pelvic alignment will just be your natural curve. So there will be a curve here. Uh, I hope my head's not cut off. <laughs> there will be a curve here um, and don't be scared of that. Some people really think that they're supposed to be all tucked and flat backed. If you are tucked and your back is flat, it will have a tendency to give you a rounded posture, rounded shoulders, a forward head. This is called a posterior pelvic tilt. Sometimes we use this for exercises. We don't want to live here. We don't want to walk around all stooped over and you will end up with back pain, probably a herniated disc. If you go the other direction and you have too much lordosis, an anterior pelvic tilt, you'll have a sway back. And I mentioned that earlier in the video. If you're just working from that top layer of belly muscles, it can have a tendency to pull you this direction. Again, this will strain your back. You'll likely end up with some SI joint problems. So you want to come into your neutral position with a small curve. I like laying on the back with the knees bent to find this position. This is my favorite posture to work on discovering your neutral. A lot of people lie very close to their neutral here or they might be right in it. Some, some lucky people just lie in here naturally and they don't have to work. In order to explore the range of your pelvis and your low back, we're going to do an exercise called rolling the invisible marble. So you're going to put a pretend marble between your belly button and your pubic bone. It's going to rest right on top of your pelvis. If you wanted to roll that marble, I'm going to move my arm, if you wanted to roll that marble towards your head, you would flatten your back, so this is the posterior pelvic tilt, and you've created a little slope for that marble to roll. If you wanted to roll the marble towards your feet, you would do the opposite. You're gonna come into an anterior pelvic tilt. You're gonna allow your back to open from the mat, and you've created a slope for it to roll between your legs, okay? We're gonna roll back and forth as far as you can in a pain-free range. On your exhalation, you will roll the marble towards the head, flattening the back, Scooping out the belly if you can, contracting that transverse abdominus. Inhale, you're gonna roll the marble towards the feet, opening the low back away from the mat. Please keep it pain free. So exhale and inhale. We're gonna try a few more breaths. Keep the tummy contracted through the whole breath if you're able to. Exhale to the head, inhale to the feet. So a couple more breaths, just coordinating the movement of the pelvis with your breath at a natural pace for you. And then what I want you to do is to continue this breath and movement, but begin to make the motion smaller. So with each breath, it's going to become a smaller and smaller increment. And as we do this, you'll hopefully begin to zero in on your midline neutral position as well as begin to release other muscles of the body so that you're no longer pushing with the legs or the bottom or your back and everything can begin to soften and relax and more of the work comes from the stomach. So in the next couple of breaths, I want you to get so small with the movement that if I were watching you, I may not be able to see which direction you're going anymore, but you can feel it internally. So one more breath. And then I want you to try to settle into where you think your middle of the range is. You felt your two extremes. So 
So if you are limited and don't have full range to begin with, your middle may not be your neutral. If you have your full extension and flexion of that low spine pelvic region, then you will likely come into your neutral as you find your midline. One way to test yourself is that you should be completely flat on top, like a table or a serving tray. If I wanted to come put a hot cup of coffee or tea on your pelvis, it would stay there still and it wouldn't spill in any direction. You should also be able to easily slide a hand underneath your low back. There should be some space and freedom there. We don't want the back smashed into the mat. So once you find that position, I want you to take note of a couple of things. Number one, are you having to work to stay here? Do you naturally fall into this position where you're flat on top and you can place a hand underneath? Or are you having to work and hold yourself? If you're having to work, then take a mental note. Are you having to roll your marble towards your feet or towards your head in order to get into your neutral? You're going to need to know that information, not only for this posture, but when you get into every other posture. And then lastly, I want you to notice, once you're in your neutral, if it's a comfortable position for you. It may not feel like your regular position. It might feel new or a little strange. But is there any pain? If there's pain, then you need to modify this position and work with the rolling the invisible marble exercise until you can comfortably get into neutral. Okay, I'm going to show you another tool that I really like to use for finding neutral. Because that's how we get into it in our hook line position, but we're not always in hook line position in life. So if you take the heels of your hands and place them on the bony front part of your hip, so this is your anterior superior iliac spine, your ASIS. Everybody's got it. I don't care what shape you are. If you dig in there, you're going to feel a really bony front prominence on your hip. So your heels and your hands go there. Your thumbs are going to come up towards your belly button and your fingers down towards your pubic bone. So you make a diamond shape through the hands. Okay. If my thumbs and fingers, when I look down at my hands, are all in the same plane, then I'm in my neutral. I'm going to turn sideways so you can get a better view. This is really helpful. Every chair you sit in is going to be different. In your car, kneeling, standing, you can use this to guide you until you can feel where your neutral is on your own. So if I have that sway back position, that anterior tilt, when I look down, I can't see my fingers anymore. They're too deep. And if I flatten my back and round, now my thumbs are too deep. I have a slope here. So if I find where my thumbs and my fingers are all in the same plane and stack my body up, then I'm in a pretty good position here, and I can tell that I'm in my neutral. It takes a little practice if you don't normally hang out in your neutral position to find where that is for you, and then to discover how you get yourself there comfortably when you are in different postures and doing different things. So you want to be able to pull the belly button in gently to contract the transverse abdominus muscle that will flatten the belly. There's your aesthetic bonus. And it will support your low back. So there's your pain-free bonus. And then you want to work on finding that neutral position. And again, when some people start, they don't have all of their range. Some people can't even get into a neutral comfortably. If that's the case, use that rolling the marble exercise as a tool to open up and release your low back and pelvis find that freedom of movement, and then get into your neutral. If you have any questions, you can email me at amandascorner, C-O-R-E-N-E-R, at charter.net. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.